Welcome to Beyond Borders on the Canary Islands, where two very different worlds collide. Because of the pandemic, the world has experienced uh, transformation in, in the workplace. Part of the population is very against migration. I sit down in a boat, yeah, I started to give up, crying. I said, okay, if I die, if I die here, that's the way God directed. They are trying to escape from a war in their own country. Who are the parasites? Less history tell, <laughs> not the judge, I prefer. We've arrived to see Father Jose Benitez and hear the story of the three men who clung to a ship's rudder for 11 days, from Nigeria to Gran Canaria. Also with him is another migrant, Mortala Mboup. He claims he's a victim of mistaken identity and that he shouldn't have spent the last three years in jail on the Canaries. Even now, he is only on day release and has to go back to prison at night. When he has the dinner, he pays with a companion of mine from Senegal. We came here, the 46 people who were here, and we took a center of camp of immigrants. There, they were asking the people, who is the captain? Who is the captain? Who is the captain? Some of the three people who came with us, they were accused of saying that I and the other people, Yo y él que está condicionando que nosotros somos capitán y la verdad que no, no somos capitán. Un problema es cuando estábamos en el mar tenemos un problema que la máquina que tiene, los máquinas que tenemos tiene un problema que no funcionaba. El, desde el primer día yo y él, ese chaval que estaba conmigo lo arreglamos. Ellos piensan que como yo sabe, sabe, sabe te estaba ayudando mi propio voluntario y pensaba que soy el capitán. Te, te... Siempre dijeron que no soy capitán y no soy jefe, no soy nada. Yo pago mi propio dinero para venir, pero no tenía un abogado pagado para defenderme. Y como también no hablaba el idioma, no hablaba francés ni español, solo hablaba un idioma, entonces no podría defenderme bien. Y siempre dijeron que no soy el capitán. Y eso no es suficiente, tiene que traer una prueba que te... No tengo mucho futuro aquí, pero tengo un sueño que quería cumplir, venía aquí, aquí, venía aquí a España por algo, no solo venía aquí por, porque aquí es Europa, no. Tenía un objetivo aquí y también voy a seguir con eso. Jailed as a migrant boat captain, some have called him a people smuggler. He'll be released on license soon and with the help of his friend the priest will apply to stay. We will return to Father Benitez and his work with other migrants soon but first to the north of the country, away from the capital streets. We are here because while one group of newcomers is treated as unwanted, another group is welcomed with open arms and generous tax breaks. They are the digital nomads. Away from the migrant reception centres, in Gran Canaria's beauty spots, they've found a life they see as the perfect blend of work and wonder. You can see there's not a lot going on here, but in reality, behind these walls, the world is connected. This is a town on the Canary Islands where people come to remain in touch with the rest of the world. They are wired up and they're working. Some travel alone, others book package holidays. All are networking and meeting like-minded workers who take their laptops wherever in the world they can use them. The Canaries want them to come, and if they stay, they pay greatly reduced taxes 
compared to locals. You have the option to sit at home and work there, or you could be in Gran Canaria having this view and meeting people from all these cool places and expanding and growing every day. We're set up in cool places. We've been in Cape Town, Marrakesh. We're now in Gran Canaria. Next, I'm going to Buenos Aires, then Antigua, um, always with groups to 20 to 25 people, and yeah. Effectively, they're working on their holidays. We don't position it like that because we are serious about getting work done. We are serious about productivity. Uh, so we purposely never schedule any programs that conflict with the regular workday. But we do keep our weekends open so people can have the time to explore uh, and do those holiday type adventures that you normally would. Gillian is here dealing with her entertainment contacts in New York. So I work in the music industry. I met somebody that actually has a blog um, that he just purchased and he's looking for someone to work on. I was like, wow, within 24 hours, there's a potential opportunity to get involved with a cool new project. And it doesn't come cheap. Nacho Rodriguez provides accommodation in what was a hotel and a communal workspace for between five and 600 euros a week per person. Well, I think the, the world has experienced, uh, because of the pandemic, a transformation in, in the workplace. Um, remote work uh, was banned before the pandemic for many companies, and nowadays it's a must for, for many. And this is driving people to new places, probably more connected to lifestyle. And uh, in the Canary Islands, it's certainly a great lifestyle. There is at least one digital nomad who teaches media studies from wherever she is, who doesn't buy into the reasons some of her fellow travellers give for their new lifestyle. The age is doesn't matter. Okay. I didn't, I, because those in Bali, I mean, tend to be 20 to 30, but the age doesn't matter. I've met 50 plus people who would be um, like full of themselves. I'm so a digital nomad. I'm so spiritual. I'm a life coach now. I've changed my profession. I will teach you how to live. Okay, <laughs> I do my yoga every day, okay, you know, these kind of people, and they can be 20, they can be 55, and it doesn't matter. Um, that's why when you ask me, like, what is really digital moment, I don't know. So Ilona is paying 3,000 euros a month, and in truth it is hard to see this as some kind of nomadic alternative lifestyle, when clearly it needs extensive financing. It supposedly just came out, the digital visa nomad, so we're waiting to speak to uh, Abogado, our lawyer, to help us get it through, because I don't think it's that simple, but we're still waiting to see, because it's, it's brand new, it just came out for Spain. And if you had this visa, would you spend more time away from Canada? That's another good question. If I'd asked my husband the question, he'd probably say yes. He's really in love with this particular place of Canar in Canary Islands, in Agaiti. So I think he would like to live here full time, especially since this digital nomad visa apparently has a tax flat, flat tax rate of 15 percent, which is less than half what we pay in taxes in Canada. We spoke to Chantel in Michele Garavini's cafe Hondo nearby. He came simply looking for a break and now runs a popular business. You're still in Europe. You have a great uh, connection, Internet connection. And uh, the time frame is the same as London time frame. And uh, so it's very good for this kind of aspect. Plus, you need to put in the nature and the weather is very, is very great also. So there's a lot of reason, I believe, why people choose to come over for become a digital nomads. Also looking for their Eden are those whose laptops take them anywhere and who share a roof garden on the top of this converted workshop in the capital. Alrighty, so we've got here some celery, some eggplant, beetroot, leek, and my favorite kale. It's the one I juice Can every I morning, of course. Okay. For five euros a day, in a downstairs workspace, they get the power in both senses of the word, to travel the world. These digital nomad visas, what difference will they make? Especially for non-Europeans, uh, they make it in a way that you can stay more than three months. That's a big difference. Most of these visas are more focused on outside the European Union. Um, and citizens. once those people come in, if it's easier for them with the visas to stay and stay and stay, is that going to change the nature of the islands very much? 
uh, I think it's unavoidable because if you are attracting people and if you give them conditions to stay longer, it will eventually change, of course. It's, it has changed uh, before. There are a lot of retirees coming here in the past and still are, so it's the same, but a different wave, I would say. Our journey now takes us to what's been referred to as the migrant boat graveyard. Salma, Ayuba, Ajala, Ajaka, Sark, Kira, Hanan. There are hundreds more that have been junked elsewhere. Most have motivational messages on their hulls about hope, strength, luck and danger. Old oil skins, probably leggings. I don't know who they'd have been given to. And as we come through here, oh gosh, look, what do you start to see? Personal items left behind. Got a hat here. Hobie something. Balen Siga. Oh gosh, look. Shoe. Another shoe, another hat. It's, it's impossible. We just don't know who came on this boat, whether they all made it or whether in fact some of them lost their lives. But this is not seaworthy, not in the slightest. Um, I don't know how old the boat is, but it's not been looked after at all. Well, <laughs> and then look at this, look at this. Come here, if you don't mind. Look at that. It's a horseshoe for luck. And it's upside down, which is supposed to mean that any luck has actually fallen out. His boat isn't here, but Suleiman Jallo remembers his journey well. I sit down in a boat. One day, two days, okay, I started to give up, crying. I said, okay, if I die, if I die here, that's the end of my life. That's the way God directed. So, three days, our food is finished with no water. I remember when the Red Cross come without um, the boat. It's one big orange boat. They come and help us from the, the sea to the boat. I couldn't even walk. You are about to get married. You have a son with a woman you met here yeah. on the Canary Islands. Yeah. You have another son yeah. on the way. We're standing in this boatyard looking at yes. vessels in which so many people may have lost their lives. Yes, of course. You are a lucky one. Yes, of course. And that's the reason why always I give thanks for that reason. Because there's many people come, they never make it alive to here. Ending up here as a waiter may have been beyond Suleiman's dreams, but he's there with a group called Mama Africa. Une Tove and her husband Calvin Lucock started the group and remember the pandemic times of 2021 when thousands came and they offered shelter in a hotel they owned. Not everyone was so accommodating as many protested outside. Okay, it's, we need to have a system when people arriving in those, because it was a lot of people arriving. But I also think that we need to think how we do that, because I think that to have institutions everywhere that we're moving people around, first of all, it costs an awful lot of money. And I think that they would love to contribute. So what is being done wrongly? I can't point any fingers and I don't want to point any fingers at anything, but I think that we need to look at everybody as human beings. They're people. And is that not happening? Yes and no. It's very hard for me to point fingers. A lot of people do a lot of good jobs and they, they meet them with a lot of love and a lot of respect. But I do believe that they are like a bit segregated. It's like a group of people that we need to do something with instead of looking at what sort of people that are arriving. And then the government is also saying, come here to all of those people who've mm. got money overseas and spend it in the Canary Islands, mm. the new visas, the digital startups, the digital nomads. Mm. They're treated as special guests, mm. but these other guys aren't. No, unfortunately not. Uh, 
and we are very close to Africa, so for me it's more natural to see Africans here than all the tourists. But of course, this island live of tourism. But I, I find it really sad that we are like, uh, don't see more of the cultures mixed. It's in Una Terve's kitchen and restaurant that the young men work. Suleiman has named his first child after Calvin. Back with Father Benitez, they are handing out food parcels to the homeless. When migrants are lost at sea, he tries to track down and contact the families of those who've died. He took in the three Nigerians, who against the odds made it here on the rudder of a huge tanker that came out of Lagos. One is still on the island, but two are having their asylum claims processed on the mainland. Henry A is one of those, and we learn that he made the same journey twice. The first time, he was sent back, once he made it onto Norway, but both journeys to the Canaries were made clinging to the outside of the vessel. Uh, a Henry, when he llega here, lo accusan de polizón. Polizón, está bueno. La, la policía lo acusan de polizón. Y entonces paralizamos todo ese proceso porque eh, él venía de una zona donde debía ser eh, acogido como protección internacional. Él venía de la zona de Biafra, de una zona de conflicto. Y ahora es en Madrid. Y ahora él está en Madrid, ¿de acuerdo? Nosotros paralizamos la orden de expulsión como polizones y lo convertimos en náufragos. La situación es completamente distinta. Y entonces aquí... Sí. Contigo. Nosotros aquí en esta fotografía es cuando él recibe la notificación de que la demanda suya de protección internacional sí, ha sido sí. confirmada. Ahora es libre. No. Ahora mismo es él es él es libre, claro. Uh -huh. eh, él es demandante de protección internacional y ahora lleva todo su procedimiento pues en curso. Es un milagro. Es un que, milagro. Sí. Es un milagro. Es decir, porque él tenía que haber sido devuelto a su país en la misma naviera donde llegó y nosotros conseguimos paralizar eso. Diez días. Estuvo once días Aquí. en el buque, once días y gracias a Dios que el buque no estaba cargado y que el mar estuvo bien, porque si hubiera estado abarcado no lo hubieran contado. Que muchos familiares se ponen en contacto conmigo para buscar a sus familiares y ese es el gran dolor que sentimos los que trabajamos en el tema de la migración. Cuando una madre eh, nos llama y nos pide bueno, pues que le podamos decir alguna información sobre el paradero de, de su familia. ¿Do the authorities treat them the way they should? Bueno, eh, hay de todo. Eh, yo soy capellán en el CIE también y me encuentro también bueno, pues con situaciones dolorosas eh, porque un chico que ha llegado aquí, que no ha cometido ningún delito, y son tratados como delincuentes, como si hubieran cometido un delito, pues eh, te das cuenta de, de cómo nuestra justicia, la justicia europea, está más mm, del lado de, de poner trabas, dificultades, penas, eh, que, que en el tema humanitario. Eh, las autoridades, la política, la ciudadanía, eh, hay de todo, es decir, policías que lo tratan muy bien, policías que lo tratan muy mal, ciudadanos que lo tratan muy bien y son muy solidarios, ciudadanos que los, los denuncia y les ofende y tenemos políticos de todo tipo aquí en España como en el resto de Europa. The third Nigerian to arrive on the tanker's rudder is being looked after locally by an NGO. How did they survive on that ship? How they survive on the ship? They hide in the front of the ship. They try to shelter in the front. And they were lucky that the, the sea didn't... The <laughs> that there wasn't more waves during the, the, the trip. Yeah? And as he said in the, already in the article, uh, they brought some water, but they lost the water during the, the, their way to, to the Canary Islands. I suppose they didn't think they would make it. Yeah, they supposed they didn't want to make it, I guess. Is it up to the European Union to stop it? Or is it up to the African states to stop allowing it to happen? Of course, they will continue to arrive. They are, they are running away from, a, they are trying to escape from a war in their own country. 
you cannot stop this. This is this is uh, this is this is totally normal. You know, it's not something that you can control. What happens? Two sides then of the migrant coin: those made welcome, and those who find not only the journey difficult, but the passage to acceptance too. And it is all being studied for a doctoral thesis by a student from Ivory Coast. Take a look at this, because this is all about international relations. It's about how the migrants came here en masse at the start of the pandemic. They got a good reception, didn't mm -hmm. they, some of them, mm -hmm. from some of the locals. They got a terrible, do sit down, Thank terrible you. reception from others. What does that say about the way the world is divided about migrants? Well, I think it's like on most of the, in Europe now, sometimes they want, they are welcoming migrants and other part of the population is very against migration, especially the, the illegal ones. So does that depend upon the example set by the government? If a government tells to its people, we don't want them here, is that what is reflected in the population? If it says, yeah, come on in, come on in. I, I, I guess so, because I think the the narrative used to describe, um, especially African and Middle Eastern migration, is like a, a, an invasion. In the local graveyard, there is a corner for those who didn't even get to spend any time ashore. I'm shown around by Teodoro Bondiali, who's in charge of the Federation of African Associations in the islands. Three graves here for young African children, one of whom drowned when she was dropped in the sea after being picked up by a local rescue vessel. In the case of this one, in the muñecas, her mother, when they came to the earth, here, here, in the Canarias, se les cayó al agua, nah. al bajar del cayuco, se le cayó la niña al agua y trataron de reanimarla, le llevaron al hospital y murió en el hospital. Era una bebé de tres años así. Solo tres años. Tres años, sí. Esta eh, llegó eh, muy mal. Trataron de reanimarla y no pudieron y murió en Arguineguín. Sí. So they've made the most difficult crossing, and then there is that unfortunate accident. Esta es la más antigua. La más nueva es aquella, y sí. esta es la que más nos impactó. Porque era una niña maliense, eh, muy bonita, y que la mamá estaba muy aceptada. Trajían dos niños, una de 11 años, y otra de, de tres años, y la de tres años es la que murió. La de once años eh, se salvó. They are buried here now. Does anybody come to care for their graves? Nosotros, de vez en cuando, cuando vienen ustedes, aprovechamos para enseñarles el drama de las migraciones. Sí, pero la, no familia. La familia es en Francia, yeah. o en Solo Londres, es, o... Extranjeros. How many people have had to be buried here and are forgotten? Es que ya se han olvidado desde que salen de África. El, el olvido es anterior a la muerte, porque son personas olvidadas y solamente las familias les recuerdan. Por eso decimos que en África, eh, en la zona de Atlántica, hay mucha gente que están en duelo. Y estamos intentando eh, comunicar a las familias que él ha pasado con su familiar. ¿Sabe usted el nombre de esa niña? Alian. Alian. Ali, al, al, Alina, me parece que Alina. es. Alina. Es una bebé de... Viene en el periódico. Alina, ¿y eso? ¿Sabe usted el nombre? No, no, ahora mismo no me acuerdo, pero yo lo puedo localizar sí. y te lo mando. Hay uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco... Posible seis aquí, niñas, niños. No, 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 tres. Tres, tres. Que solo. yo recuerde tres. Esta seguro, había otra aquí, que es la más antigua. ¿Eso es Aliana? Alian, sí. Eh, es, los es, otros dos. Son dos, ni, dos niñas también, 
pero que no me acuerdo de los nombres ahora. The numbers are rising. In 2022, almost 10,000 arrived here by boat. That's up 27% on the year before. It's claimed that as many as 1,000 died on the crossing from Africa. Here rests the little baby Sarah in his memory and all those children who lost their lives on board the wooden boats. The question that probably isn't on the minds of those who holiday here and those who come here to work is how to stop such a waste of life.